Good afternoon and welcome to our GXFS webinar to everyone on the topic of KX Federation Services Move to the Eclipse Foundation. My name is Laura Shamemeti and uh, I am responsible for technical work uh, for KX Federation uh, Services Project as part of the Project Management Office uh, at Eco Association of the Internet uh, Industry. Today with me, uh, we have a Florent and uh, Michel from Eclipse Foundation uh, that will give a presentation uh, later on after I give a short introduction about GAX Federation Services components. Uh, so before we start, I would like to go through some points uh, so you know how to uh, participate and get involved in today's event. Uh, first of all, uh, all participants uh, are muted, uh, so uh, you are not allowed to talk during the whole webinar, but you can ask uh, your question anytime at the section of, you see on your panel up uh, in the right side, question section. So uh, you can uh, type in um, every question regarding each um, uh, agenda point. Uh, you will give uh, have also the possibility to ask your question verbally if you like so at the end uh, of the presentation. So you just have to raise your hand and we will unmute you. Uh, please note that uh, today's session webinar will be uh, recorded. And um, uh, yeah. Also, for people that would like to see uh, previously the slides, uh, there is a, a material uh, se uh, section uh, also on the panel control where you can see all the materials that will be uh, used in today's uh, uh, webinar. The agenda for today is uh, that I will give a short introduction and set the scenes about the GAICS Federation Services components. As I mentioned, uh, Floro and uh, Michelle will uh, give a presentation into details uh, what is Eclipse uh, Foundation uh, and uh, what will be the role of the GXFS and uh, the setup of GAICS Federation Services in the future. Our activities at the moment regarding uh, towards uh, this um, um, in uh, this migration to Eclipse and uh, next step at the end we will have uh, the QA uh, session. So we go to the introduction of our components. So the question is, what is GAIX Federation Services? For all of you that uh, it is the first time that you hear about it, as we call it, GXFS, GAIX Federation Services is a toolbox that consists of several components, technical components that will enable federation in data ecosystems. And also through these uh, <clears throat> components, so there will be interoperability across uh, different uh, federations that will be built in the future in uh, these data ecosystems. Uh, based on functionalities of uh, each component, we have uh, mainly divided the components in five uh, work packages. So uh, first work package uh, is about identity and trust components. Second work package is about federated catalog. We have a work package for data sovereignty services, a work package dedicated for compliance, and a work package for portal and integration of uh, these services. Here, you, if you scan, you will um, go directly to the repositories where the code uh, is uh, stored at the moment under the GAIX uh, Association um, governance. Uh, getting uh, into more details and to have a deeper look on uh, our toolbox and uh, what components we have, uh, we have here authentication and authorization service as part of work package one identity and trust. So authentication and authorization services are services to authenticate users and systems in a trustworthy and decentralized self-sovereign manner. Then we have organizational credential manager component and personal credential manager. Uh, these components are SSI uh, based uh, digital wallets for uh, one organizational credential manager for participants organizations and the PCM for uh, natural uh, personas. Uh, typically, a PCM will be uh, used in form of personal wallet for the users. Both of these uh, components uh, are used for managing, issuing and storing uh, credentials. Another component of identity and trust work package is trusted services. These are uh, very important services that um, ensure a technical implementation and enforce policies for the usage of decentralized and SSI components of uh, Gaia-X. 
then we have uh, data contract services and data exchange login services for data uh, exchange uh, in sovereign manner. Uh, data contract services mainly uh, it is uh, used for negotiation of contracts. So it's a handshake between the data provider and the data consumer. While data exchange login services uh, serves uh, like a lock or provides evidence that all the uh, received or submitted data uh, have um, um, they go through uh, rules and obligations and that uh, this service ensure that these rules were not uh, violated. Then we have uh, regarding the compliance work package, onboarding and accreditation workflow. This uh, service ensures that all participants, resources or service offerings before being added or uh, in a catalog, they undergo under a validation process and then continuous automated monitoring come. This service enables uh, compliance monitoring based on cell description that we mentioned uh, in the context of a federated catalog. Uh, then we have notarization service as well as part of compliance work package. Uh, this service is designed to manage notarization requests and also issue uh, digital illegally bidding and transport credentials. We have also the catalog, federated catalog that is uh, indexed repository for uh, all GAIX, uh, feder uh, GAIX self descriptions and uh, enable discovery and selection of participants or providers that are part of the federation and um, discovery of uh, their service offerings. Then we have portal and integration. Portal is not like a federation service, but mainly it is uh, used uh, as a sample or integration layer that will uh, showcase uh, federation services. And basically it is designed to provide a more friendly uh, user access uh, to uh, users for these uh, services. Uh, at the end, we have orchestration. Uh, within the orchestration service, all GAIX consumers uh, will be able to start initializing services through the portal um, out of the catalog search results. So mainly this is a short introduction of all uh, these main services. There are also other services supplementary to the services in order to make a uh, full um, functionality of uh, the service. And the question is why we move to the Eclipse now, uh, the code and the whole project. So when we started the project, the goal was to create a reference open source code that will enable a federation in data ecosystems. Um, all the code has been published under the Apache license 2.0 and all specification other documents are under uh, CC BY. Uh, due to the German founding schemas, uh, we were obliged to implement uh, all um, the, imp uh, the specification and the code uh, through uh, our contracted partners until now. But with the move to the Eclipse Foundation, uh, we will be, uh, the project will be open um, broadly to the community under the Eclipse uh, governance. Uh, there are uh, in Eclipse at the moment uh, several uh, initiatives with a similar scope for the centralized uh, federated ecosystem such as ADC project and the Track Pulse X project. Um, please note that the uh, GAIX Federation services uh, due to some uh, trademark issues uh, will be uh, moved to the Eclipse under the name Cross Federation Services uh, Components. So if you see it in the future, don't be surprised. It's the same component, just with a new name, rebranding uh, of uh, the services name. Um, we go to the third point of the agenda. So what will be the role of GAIX Federation Services Germany after the migration is done to the Eclipse? Uh, we are heavily involved uh, in uh, conducting tech workshops and dissemination activities. Um, at the moment, and also we've planned uh, plenty of them uh, for the future, where we uh, try hard to engage the community and uh, make use of uh, the GAIX Federation Services toolstock. Uh, we have also uh, planned a second phase of uh, implementation, uh, phase release two, um, that, uh, that will uh, use also the Eclipse, uh, same Eclipse code repository in the future. Uh, we try to collect also some uh, blueprints that are really important for adoption in various scenarios and can be helpful also for uh, other projects that uh, would like to see the functionality of uh, GAIX Federation Services Toolbox. 
Uh, we plan to support deployments to a variety of Kubernetes implementations. Identity and trust of uh, IP uh, also providing interoperability and uh, a lot of other activities uh, just to make sure that uh, the community is engaged and um, this uh, toolbox are uh, put in practice. Uh, now I would like uh, to give the floor uh, to Florent and uh, Michael to uh, dig uh, deeper into the Eclipse project and foundation. Michael, the stage is yours. Thanks, Arisha. Um, so, ah, here we have the control, so I can advance the slides by myself. First of all, I would like to say welcome to everyone on the webinar. It's interesting to see how many people are interested in learning about the transition from the GAIA X Federation services to the new XFSC. Um, and I think it's the right place, right? Because now it's the, the, the point in time where after the transfer, everyone who's interested can contribute to the Federation services. And we think that's, that's a significant step on, on the way um, to build a community, to make the Federation services widely adoptable by a lot of projects, a lot of data spaces and other things. So we're really looking forward to now having this as, as open source at the Eclipse Foundation. So welcome. I think our discussion with Gaia X already started about, I don't know, when I joined the Eclipse Foundation back in the beginning of 2021, one of my very first meetings was at that time with the Gaia X board, where we talked about maybe how Gaia X could do open source and what part of Gaia X could be done in open source. Unfortunately, then took quite some months <clears throat> before the Federation services has been, or the Gaia X Federation service has been started to be implemented. And ever since then, we have been in close contact with the Ecos Andreas Weiss and the team, Emma, uh, Christina, and others um, to talk about this step. And as I said, after this, this preparation work, we are more than happy to see that the GAIX Federation services finally will arrive at the Eclipse Foundation. Let me tell you a little bit about the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, we will celebrate our 20th anniversary next year. So as you can just easily calculate backwards, the Eclipse Foundation was founded in 2004 um, and it was not ever a European organization. So we have been um, founded as an US-based Delaware 501.C um, nonprofit organization, but then after about 16 years being, being a US-based organization, we finally decided to move the Eclipse Foundation to Europe. And now we are similar to Gaia X. Um, we are a, a registered nonprofit in Brussels. Uh, the legal form is an IISBL. And we are so under EU-based laws and regulations, and we can even offer to host, coast, uh, to host, uh, to host code in Europe. We have a couple of GitLab instances running on, 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 on servers in France. So whenever someone would like to do something completely free of interference from other jurisdictions, that's easily doable at the Eclipse Foundation. Why did we move to Europe? That seems like a surprising move. Um, if you look into the details of the Eclipse Foundation, you will find that um, the majority of, of our strategic members um, and all the, the majority of our board members at the Eclipse uh, Foundation are actually Europeans and European organizations. And um, about three, three and a half years back, maybe four years back, we have the start of this discussion around general serenity in Europe, and that one part or one aspect of this general serenity should be doing implementations in open source. And based on, on, on that discussion, the board finally decided to move the organization to Europe, which then happened beginning of 2021. And since then, we are uh, uh, um, Europe's largest uh, open source foundation. And I think interesting is really to see that open, uh, that Europe currently is the place to be for open source. And ever since then, I think we had very interesting discussions around various projects um, in, in, in Europe and onboarded this project. I will have another slide on this one. Um, and I hope we can continue now with the Federation Services to build on the success story. For us, very important, and we will talk about governance a little bit later on, and Florent will also say, has some slides about the governance. Um, I would like to introduce our underlying governance principles, and everything is built on these principles. And these principles are called transparency, openness, and vendor neutrality. Transparency, for instance, no, let me start with openness, the one in the middle. Openness means everyone who is willing to adhere to the Eclipse Foundation governance principles is welcome. Um, even when you talk about projects as a non-member. So every individual can contribute to an Eclipse Foundation project. There is no need for membership for an individual. 
So for organizations, it's slightly different. And I think Florent will later on elaborate a little bit on this one. It's mainly about IP tracking, other stuff. But at the end of the day, everyone who's willing to adhere to our governance principles is welcome to work at the Eclipse Foundation and to contribute to projects at the Eclipse Foundation. Transparency for us means everything is done in the open. Again, for long later on, uh, talk a little bit how project governance works in detail. We will have different membership levels or con uh, contribution level. We have contributors, we have committers, and there are elections involved. Everything happens in the open. Um, so we have mailing lists and we ask the projects to share all kind of discussions and uh, uh, decisions, not discussion, decisions on the mailing list. So that for everyone who is interested, it is possible to follow what, what's discussed, what's happening in the project or in the working group. And finally, um, vendor neutrality. Um, Laresha already uh, touched on this one. Vendor neutrality for us is especially in a an, in an business to business ecosystem extremely important. Um, because we need to make sure that we have a level playing field for all parties to the table. And one of these things, and that sometimes sounds a little bit weird, um, is uh, trade trademarks. Assume you have a very successful project and one of the companies involved in the project would own the trademark. And at the, some point in time, this organization say, hey, this brand around this trademark about the project is so valuable, I will now use this trademark for my projects and products and do not allow the project itself, the open source project itself, to use that name any longer. As you can see from that example, owning the trademarks, um, keeping this in a neutral environment is very important next to other things. Uh, I have a couple of points later on uh, as well where we think neutrality is important so that not a single organization can have a dominating role on the projects. Um, the ecosystem, well, this was already mentioned by Laresha, so we are happy now to add the XFSC, the cross federation services components. Uh, the project is, according to our process, already started. The source code is not there yet, but at least the project proposal has part the two weeks public review process. And now we have the project proposal in place. We have the initial set of committers and others defined. And now next step would be for us, and I think we have a couple of, of um, slides on this later on, would be to onboard the source, source code. Next to this one, we have the data space components, which currently uh, yes, sees a lot of uh, attention by the various different projects and initiatives as a core building block for data spaces. We see Eclipse Structure 6, which is the um, implementation project for Catena Um I think there are a couple of oh, nearly 100 actual, uh, active developers right now developing Trust Six. They are meanwhile, I think, on release version 3.1 or 3.2. So they have now a first running demonstrator here. And this is something where things really happening um, when it comes to Catena Rix. And maybe that was not on the slides uh, by, by Laresha, but I think it's at least equally important, our digital twin um, top level project. We see a lot of asset administration shell projects here. So we have this collaboration with the IDTA, the Industrial Digital Twin Association. And the IDTA, similar now to, to ECO, decided to onboard all their open source projects at the Eclipse Foundation. So all the things around the asset administration shell is all the hosted at the Eclipse Foundation. So things coming nicely together, from my understanding, to, to finally build data spaces based on open source as various components needed for this one. There's more out there. I will not, uh, will not explain or, or, or mention everything. But as, as you can see, these are the three core projects which are already at the Eclipse Foundation. And now um, with the cross federation service components, um, I think we will just strengthen the ecosystem at the Eclipse Foundation. Um, yeah, we're talking about Eclipse projects. So the cross federation service components will become an Eclipse project. What does that mean? So first of all, the project confirms the Eclipse development process and the Eclipse IP policy. Then it should call itself an Eclipse project and conforms to foundation branding guidelines. That was mentioned before. That means, for example, that each project, each, each first reference of the project name should start with Eclipse, Eclipse Eclipse Cross Federation Service Components. And then through all the text later, it could be it's, it's completely fine with referring to just Cross Federation Service Components. Um, so we have a detailed branding um, guideline here. That's just to make sure that, that the projects are named in the right way. Um, 
Projects operates independently from any specific vendor. I think that's a very interesting statement. So when you look at projects at the Eclipse Foundation, organizations doesn't play a role. With one exception, that's an IP tracking, and, and Florent may come to this later on. If you look at the project, the main player in the projects are individuals. For example, if you have a certain role in a project, this role does not depend for which organization you're working. Even if you're switching your employer, you still have that role. So the role is not bound to a certain work contract or similar. It's really only bound to the individual. And so you can see a project maybe as a collaboration of individuals and not organizations. Organizations usually as an organization itself does not have an impact on a project. Um, and finally, use infrastructure provided by the Eclipse Foundation for core content. I will not, not go into too much into detail what core content is. Um, this is, let's say, the source code documentation issues and others, issue tracking and others. And the reason for this is, as I mentioned before, vendor neutrality. Only if we at the Eclipse Foundation, as the neutral organization in the middle of all the players in a project in a working group, only we can make sure that um, that there is this neutrality. And one of the um, steps to ensure this is that usually the Eclipse Foundation provides the infrastructure. Um, short couple of words about the Eclipse Foundation development process. Um, it defined the open source rules of engagement, the governance structure and definitions, relationship and roles. And it provides also framework for the project lifecycle management. So we are from the very beginning when, when a project is in incubation state, up to when a project later on, maybe in 15 years from now, hopefully for the Federation Service or even later, up to the archive um, 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 life, uh, life cycle state. So we even make sure that projects which are not any longer actively developed are still accessible by the community because that's sometimes, sometimes necessary. And we all, do, or it also provides an interaction, uh, the, the, the rules for the interaction between projects and the community. You can find this, everything of the Eclipse Foundation, which is important, can be found online. Um, that's um, just a screenshot of a website. And I can promise you, we do not stop at point six. I think we end about uh, chapter 12 or something around this one. If you would print the complete document, I would say you would come end up with 300 to 400 pages. But everything which makes the Eclipse Foundation, which is, which is important for the work on projects, is described on the website. So whenever you have a question later on, if you're a little bit experienced to what we are doing at the Eclipse Foundation, that's a very good point of reference. Um, if you have questions, um, and, and it's usually even I regularly look at this um, document uh, if we talk about detailed questions in a community. And again, it's a very valuable source of information for everything we are doing around projects at the Eclipse Foundation. Um, I mentioned this one, the keys must be kept safe. Core infrastructure must be immune from domination by any single individual organization. That's explicitly what I mentioned with about vendor neutrality. I think it's not good for the health and for the sustainable of a project if one organization could dominate um, uh, this, this, this project. So that means we hold the keys for core infrastructure, but you do not have to reinvent the wheel every time. Pick up and carry on means from our perspective, if projects already work on GitHub, we would just take the keys for the GitHub, but can continue to work on the same GitHub repositories. There's not necessarily the need to complete a transfer from one GitHub repo into another GitHub repo, which is sometimes even difficult because you lose history. So we can e usually, if existing projects are onboarded, pick up the keys and then carry on the project. And the ownership of non-core infrastructure must at least be shared with us. And the reason here is that we do not want to be dependent on a single team member. So Whatever happens, we call this internally the bus factor, huh? the, the, the chance that someone is run over by a bus. Um, if, that, if a certain resource is, is dependent on that only one person knows the keywords or uh, the passwords are similar, that would not be helpful. So we claim at least for non-core non infrastructure, we at least would like to have to share the keys so that whatever happened, at least on the Eclipse side, we would have all the access to the resources. Finally, uh, we talked about vendor neutrality a lot. Um, so that means we really are open to all comers, including competitors for the Federation service. I, maybe I don't see so many competitors right now where everyone should just be happy that this is now finally available and everyone can contribute the Federation services. Vendor neutral resources and service, as I mentioned before, so the trademark is just one example, project re websites, issue tracker, 
mailings and forums, downloads and, and Git repositories are other examples for vendor neutral resources where we need to keep the keys. And committers, as we said, according to our key principles, uh, must work in the open. That means they need to communicate in a transparent manner. And we at the Clips Foundation, and again, Florent will elaborate a little bit on this one. One of our rules uh, and one of the, our tasks, um, there will be an organization later on, which is called EMO, Eclipse Management Office. We all to make sure that this will happen. So if we see that committers are not communicating as open as public as they should, it's usually our team or the PMC looking into this one. And first of all, talk friendly to the committers and say, hey, it would be great if you can be a little bit more open and share more information via the communication channels of the project. Um, but that's finally something where the Eclipse Foundation takes care that this would happen according to our, our expectations. And with this, I would hand over to Florent. Um, I will give up the control. Florent, please take it from here. Thank you, Michael. So for presenting this, uh, <clears throat> so Michael, give you an, an overview of the principles of, of governance and some key aspects. And we'll come back to some of them that are really important. Uh, so we said a project that's many we, we call that an eclipse project. Many we see that what you will see that how we define an eclipse project. Uh, first, I need just is it working? Or, yes, okay, it's working. So uh, the core of a project there is the committers and the contributors, and the committers they are basically the people uh, who have you know access the full power are the ultimate authority of a, of a project. You know they are. They can decide uh, contribution, validate the contributions, maybe externally they can push codes, it can be code, can be documentations, and uh, they decide what they will work on or not. So they are somehow the primary gatekeepers of the project, uh, the project, you know, and uh, <clears throat> they have, uh, they also are, as Michael said, no, they are not linked to the, the contribution they not they do not need to be a member of the eclipse foundation they can anyone can create an eclipse account and start being a contributor and then maybe why not become a committer you know uh committers they need to the, the, the ip is recorded to uh an individual it's not rec uh, the, or maybe it can belong to a company depending on the contract they have the, the, with their companies but the ip basically is kept to to is linked to, to someone they need to complete an individual committer agreement if they are not linked to a company or they are they may be linked to a member committer and contributor agreement this is then when the company uh, member is uh, having access you know is declaring that these individuals are working on their behalf but then if they leave the company then they will keep their rights. They will keep their uh, what they the, where they have the rights of committers some somewhere on some project or not. So you are a committer because uh, that's an individual, uh, an individual power and not linked to your employer. This is uh, something really important to understand that this is not because you are uh, members and maybe a strategic members. You say that's okay. I employ these people, this guy, so he can be a committer. On the project, no. The guy has to, you know, make contributions that are recognized by his fellow committers of the projects, and uh, that's, you know, many contributions. The contributions are done in the opens. They must be accepted by a committer, and then uh, they, these people working as contributors, they also need to sign the Eclipse contributor agreement. We will see that I think a little bit later because there is. A developer certificate of origin that is that is linked to this eclipse contributor. So, because the committers they need to uh, review the contribution from the contributors and make sure that everything is in order, mainly regarding the IP. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's okay. So I've said that the committer doesn't depend is independent from the organization. The committers, okay. So they were as he said, as uh, Michael said, they are working in the open. So everything, there is no back channel, nothing uh, like that. Um, and then they also uh, start the, the elections for the contributors. So uh, we will come back to that later. The contributors are, uh, there is an election process if a contributor with mainly good open source recognized open contribution are done. 
can be elected as a committer and there is a process for that and uh, this is done also through mailing list and we have tools to manage uh, this kind of uh, process in the open so basically uh, as i said anybody can be a contributor uh, like that uh, so that's it for that slide so when you then so it's not moving okay so on top of this you have not on top but sorry it's bad use of them with the committers you have the project list basically the project list are the primary liaisons uh, with uh, the, the the emo and the project management committee because we have top level projects you know projects uh, with many sub projects and so basically the project management committee the pfc is just uh, defined and manage the structure of this top level project and the open source project that depends on, on the TLC. And they ensure that the project fits, fits within the mission of the TLP and the charter. And they oversee the operations of the, of, the, of the open source project. They have the responsibility. Make sure basically that the charter, the governance is well executed. And if there is election, they, they validate the election, they validate the release, they, vali they kind of make sure that the IP is okay, and that every contributor, committers have signed this ICA, ECA, and, and so on. So this is part of the, the PMC is, is not, a tech, not, not a technical, is not there to have the technical choice, not just to make sure that the governance is really well executed. Uh, so the project lead, they are there to, uh, they are the main point of contact, you know, the primary liaison between the project team and the EMO. EMO, as uh, Michael said, that's the, uh, that's Eclipse Foundation staff uh, mainly, and they are the guy of, in charge of making sure that the governance of the Eclipse Foundation is well executed. Uh, they works with the PMC, the EMO, they works with the PMC to, so to accept new projects, to approve it, I, the IP of contributors, to approve the committee elections, to approve the reviews, and they sometimes step in to resolve the dispute if there is something to, if there is some dispute inside the projects. Basically, the EMO just implement the EDP and make sure everyone is following it. And then the PMC are the relays we are into the project. And the project leads are the main interlocutors sometimes there are some security issues some specific stuff the project lead should be the main point of contact if you want to keep something you know sometimes close like a security issue before disclosing it before you need to work on it the project leads will know how to deal with that uh, within the project but they are not to be confused with technical lead so basically how it works just a schema to summarize what we've said so far uh the, the so as you said as you can see so the, the committers they are here to manage plan schedule uh the projects their main tools are the git uh, repositories and the issues so now currently uh, we have mainly gitlab or github so if i remember correctly you're moving to the eclipse gitlab for the xfsc uh, project so that would be the eclipse gitlab hosted in uh, europe and uh, you have also contributors and the role of committers is to to accept the pull on the merge request from the contributors basically and then also to to start an election from contributors to become committers and the pmc is just there to to oversee the governance and every, see everything is well executed executed and validate the results so So, okay. so you have also the quick note on the committee elections. Um, right? Yes, the committee election. That's so. Do you, you everyone in the committer as a committer can uh, promote? So, no, the, the, sorry, not can promote. Can propose some someone a contributor for promotion. They need to give a ne nearly an exhaustive list of the good contribution and everything that has been done by this contributor. As of being code that can be code, but also documentation or bug triaging or you know deep in, showing deep involvement on, over the months on a projects. And every contribution needs to be public and can be reviewed. They need to be listed and they need to be <clears throat> somehow good contribution reviewed and recognized by by other committers. And then there is a, 
an election process and uh, every committer must participate in this election that is running for a couple of weeks. So I told you before the Eclipse contributor agreement, as I said, anyone can just open an Eclipse account. It's completely free. There is no membership required. Membership is only for companies. There is no membership for individual, but you can contribute yourself just as an individual. You just need to sign the, an ECA that's just confirmed that you comply with the developer certificate of origin and that everything you're going to contribute to do within the project, you have the right to do it and you have the right to bring what you're going to bring to put it under the correct license. This is just, just uh, this is written under the, uh, the, the DC or developer certificate of origin that you can see. And all contribution, of course, must be public. Here is a couple of links if you want to dive in deeper inside the, the Eclipse development process. So just Michael told you about the, the address, the URL was sent before. We have also the same kind of uh, process, open process for specifications. You can do specification, not only code, but specification inside the Eclipse Foundation. And the process is basically the, the same process with, which is open, transparent, vendor neutral. We've got uh, the handbooks also for project from creation to termination, sometimes for projects, and it's okay for project to be terminated, but we have project, we have everything in the handbook from creation to, to termination and including uh, dispute resolution, the elections, uh, people for going from uh, removing also some right of, of committers if people want to step down or and did not contribute for a long period of time and so on. And we also have some nice videos uh, of training that you can see online. Uh, if you want to deep dive inside a specific part, just like maybe the election, the walls, and uh, that's done by the EMO, Eclipse Management Office, to help you understand that better. Um, Michael, maybe you want to add something? Yeah, I, I see one I, I, I really like would like to emphasize because a couple of people must, they ask themselves, so this contributor committer stuff. So how do we become a committer? Because the committers are obviously an influential position inside the project, right? And whenever you deal with the Eclipse Foundation, you sooner or later will stumble upon a term which is called meritocracy. The idea for the projects is that the most active people in a project should become the most influence, could get the most influence on the project. So initially when a project is started, and you will see this on the webpage for the XFSC as well, there's an initial list of committers this is usually named by the project starter. That's, I think, one of the rights and positive things you can do if you start a project at Eclipse Foundation. But then, over the course of the project, the the uh, the group of committers should grow. And as Florent said, it should grow by the most active contributors. So the idea, and, and that's what the election process is about, that if a contributor really makes frequent, high-quality contributions, sooner or later, one of the committers would say, this contributor is doing a great job. We would like to have him as a committer as well. And I propose him to be elected as a committer. And here are the contributions he did. Why I think it would be valuable to have him as a committer. At the end, at the Eclipse Foundation, it proved to be very successful. And again, the underlying idea is that the most active people in the project should have the most influence on the project. Yeah, with this, I would go back and and let's, uh, with, with the next uh, large, Oresha, if you would take over and continue, that would be nice. Sure. Thank One you, Michael. Point. Welcome. And so. We can answer any question. Is there any question on the chat or before going um, further? Until now, I don't see any question, but I will give some additional time to the participants. Um, after uh, my last presentation, we will go through each question and uh, maybe have also some discussions. Okay. So how it is uh, the Cross Federation Services uh, Components Project uh, set up at the moment. Uh, so as uh, project leads, we have uh, Stefan Schulz from T-Systems International as technical lead of the components at the moment and uh, myself together with uh, Christina Pauna 
a community manager from uh, GAIX uh, Association, who will be community co-lead uh, for this project. And uh, then we have uh, for uh, we have divided uh, also here in groups of the services. So uh, for the identity and trust components, uh, please note uh, these uh, individuals are selected here based uh, because they were involved in all the contribution and uh, development of these uh, services. But it's not said that uh, individuals are connected to the companies or uh, association or what they uh, where they work. It's also uh, impossible that uh, everyone can get involved as individual. So for identity and uh, trust uh, components, we have Bertolt Maya uh, from T-Systems, Denis uh, Sukhorov, Voslov from T-Systems, Stefan Schulz as well from T-Systems. We have Karsten Stoka from Sferity together with uh, Ricky Thierman. And we have uh, Georg uh, Greve and Kalin Chano from uh, Verein. For Federated Catalog, we have uh, from Cloud and Heat, Anja Strong. Then from Fran Overfit, we have Christoph Langen. And uh, also from T-Systems International, we have uh, Denis uh, Sukroslov. Uh, for Compliance, we have uh, from uh, Fran Over, Isaac, uh, Christian Bons and Nico Hans. And uh, we have uh, Hussein uh, from Alenea. For Data Exchange, we have uh, Sebastian uh, Steinbus uh, from uh, IDSA. And for the portal and integration at the moment, we have uh, Mattia uh, Tsenkar from XLab and uh, Sven Batista from uh, SciSelf. So uh, next steps. At the moment, uh, we are restructuring and also cleaning up a bit uh, our current repositories where the code and everything uh, is uh, developed. Uh, we are also doing, doing a cleanup for the trademark uh, moving from JXFS uh, to across Federation Services components. Please note that uh, the, uh, at the moment uh, the code in GitLab is uh, frozen, so uh, it will be just only uh, in read uh, uh, mood, uh, read only mood. Um, after uh, that, we will uh, move. After we do all these changes, we will move uh, the, to the new repositories uh, under Eclipse. Here is the link where all the code will be transferred. So for the community building, uh, we will uh, also regarding uh, this transition, we will have a very deep dive uh, webinar for all interested parties that want to be uh, contributors and why not committers in the future, uh, where we will discuss all the technical and everything regarding the transition of across uh, Federation Services components to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, we have uh, our uh, GXFS Connect 2023 together with the hackathon uh, on 5 and 6 September this year in Berlin. Uh, the invitation is open to anyone to join us and uh, also uh, get involved and um, participate in hackathon, but also very important to see the Gaia community and uh, ex do exchanges with all the experts behind all these services and initiatives. Uh, we have also, uh, as mentioned before, uh, conducting go tech workshops uh, that uh, will happen in the coming months. Uh, we will uh, keep you posted with our um, newsletter uh, letter, and also you can visit our website where you will see the exact date and uh, agenda. Uh, we uh, invite you all to join our community. We have our uh, newsletter, please uh, subscribe there. We have also a dedicated Matrix channel where our, uh, all our uh, techies um, and developers uh, have conversation regarding these components. Uh, and uh, our experts also are there supporting the community. So you can see uh, issues from previous uh, um, users or members and uh, that can help or support also uh, you while using these components and uh, please register to our uh, next monthly webinar as we have uh, regularly every every month uh, webinar regarding AX Federation services. Saying that I would uh, go now to the QA session. And we are open for your question. And please uh, raise your hand if you uh, also want to talk or start any discussion. All okay. right. 
Thank you very much, Laresha, and also Florent and Michael. Thanks for all these explanations. I'm looking at the question panel and it's still empty. Either it's a technical barrier or we did an awesome job. We explained everything without additional questions. Now, uh, I assume there will be, of course, a lot of questions because we shouldn't underestimate the sensitivity and also the complexity of all these components which are going to be featured now via the Eclipse community. And that's the reason why we are here to help you with the uptake, to get engaged, to get an understanding why these components are there and what is the individual purpose. And um, as Michael also outlined, there are complementary projects like PDC, like Tractus X, and even furthermore activities. And we clearly stated, and Roresha named it, this is a reference implementation, what we are featuring now with XFSC. Uh, there are also other options to achieve such goals and to provide adequate functionality. But, uh, and it is part of our ongoing activity to find a good alignment between all these projects. Um, even if there is some redundancy in the implementation, we should uh, outline uh, where it is best suited, what are the goals here. And when we talk about Gaia-X in general, there are some terms like data spaces, like federations, like connectors and so on. So a bunch of buzzwords, and uh, we need to give you at least some guidance. At the end of the day, it's on the community, it's on the entities behind the acting person to drive this forward. And I think this is what Michael and Florent clearly outlined. It's on you as a community to take it up. And uh, now I'm getting the first question. Happy to follow up on here by Fabian. Uh, what happens to existing issues and merge requests? Will they be migrated? Yes, they will be migrated. They won't be lost uh, because we will keep them because this is also of relevance to, to streamline the code, to upgrade the code. And as Laurisha also mentioned, we will do some additional contribution to enhance some functional areas, which also addresses some of the uh, requests. And in this sense, I... Uh, we will have a wrap up after the full migration. And uh, there's also an activity to collect these open merge requests and also open uh, change requests. Uh, and then it will be part of our next community interaction to prioritize them. And now things are moving forward. About how long will the cleanup will be taking time? Loresha, do we have any indication? I'm, I'm not sure about the planned timelines right now. Yeah, we are uh, working on that, and uh, it's uh, quite a challenge because we had uh, some um, components that uh, should stand like uh, in a long uh, project, uh, and now to bring uh, all in one single repo uh, is a challenge. But we are working on that, and possibly two or three weeks will uh, last until we do all this activity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then there's a question by Mohamed uh, about uh, page 13. I think this is with either Michael about IP, which is, I assume, intellectual property. Yeah. You can elaborate a little bit more on this topic. So in general, okay. So um, it's important. So important to understand that usually um, if you do a project at the Eclipse Foundation, um, you need to grant rights to anyone who would like to use the project according to the chosen um, 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 open source license. Well, other than sometimes in, 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 in um, open source projects, which are dominated by a single vendor where you need to transfer most of your IP rights, which is more or less close to transfer the ownership of the IP at the project, at the Eclipse Foundation, you only need to, and you don't transfer the IP. That's very important to understand. The IP. Eclipse Foundation does not get any IP. You grant rights to the user of your software. And these rights are defined in the Choose an Open Source License. So what we, that the Eclipse Foundation the project have what we call symmetrical or inbound equals outbound. So the IP rights, which needs to be divided, 
are the IP rights which are needed to for any anyone who wanted to use that component under the choose an open source license. But I don't see IP on the on the slide here. So maybe I oh yeah, here. So technical proof of IP contributions. Um, maybe that's something um, completely different story, so I may not get it. So whenever a new project or a larger amount of contribution, we talk about a couple of thousand lines of code, are contributed to a project, our IP team looks into the contribution. And what the, our IP team is doing, it checks if the IP, first of all, if all the components have IP information, license information in place. And secondly, we test if these IP licenses are compatible with each other. So we check if there's no GPL um, license software component inside the software, which would finally would not be compatible with the chosen Apache V2 license for the Federation services. So our IP is doing that check independently. I know that most organizations before they contribute to something similar, but our IP team checks this once again so that we have a clear baseline and can make sure that all the um, components which are contributed to the Clip Foundation are, have A, all license information in place, and B, we can we check that these licenses are compatible with each other. And the PMC finally needs to approve that this is happening. So the check is done by our IP team, and the PMC at the end looks on this one and says, yes, it's good, and then we can, can continue to onboard the source code in the reserve property. All right. Just Thanks, Michael. Just to complete, maybe the, you know the, the committers, project committers, they have some kind of the obligation to accepting contribution and to make sure that the contributors they are covered by the Eclipse contributor agreement, the ECA, and this agreement that makes sure that we have the necessary rights. Sorry, the contributors have the necessary rights to accept and distribute the contribution. So with the, 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 the DC or the developer certificate of origin. And we have set up system, there was automated system in place just to help the committers check this and to help them verify that everything is in order regarding IP. Thank you, Flora. Now I just realized I skipped two questions. I will recap on these. So one was by Michael, Michael Pelvo. I see the guys will no longer be the name of the project. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fact. And I think Varesha explained also the background due to trademark and there's also given constraint by Eclipse that there should be no introduction of foreign trademarks in any of these Eclipse projects. So it is a clean space so far. But of course, we don't lose the relationship to GaiaX. This project is still fully embedded into this overall Gaia X uh, uh, initiative, which is a multi-layer approach anyway. So we have the association who is taking care about core specification and core components which are relevant for this ecosystem involvement. But I think the next layer is already the open source community to adopt it, to, to uh, provide uptake on this conceptual approach and also to contribute code. And then we have uh, these Gaia X hub uh, which are distributed across over the world to, to collect domain knowledge and bring domains together. And we have a bunch of lighthouse projects like Athena X, which are also directly linked to Eclipse with Tractus X, and they are also clearly committed on EDC. So this will be part of this future ecosystem approach, which is not just the association as its core, but also the community, the projects, the domains, and uh, we're really aiming to see industrial deployment on these conceptual approaches like emerging manufacturing activities. So you will see a lot of more initiatives beside this. So I think it should be agnostic to certain actors. And therefore, we make this choice. Our key objective is to build up federations, whatever this means. And you're warmly invited to work on this topic and to enhance it and uh, to work towards fair digital ecosystems which are using data infrastructures in a federated way. So this was always a key narrative from the beginning. And in this sense, uh, Christoph, you asked this question about the strategic alignment with related projects. I 
I featured it already a little bit, but again, it's not on us, at least on our eco entity as a procurer for GXF SDE. It's on the community to liaise, to engage, to exchange, to find common uh, directions. Um, and uh, I think one of the key terms we should keep into consideration is interoperability. Whatever we do, we should not establish any silos. We should not build artificial constraints. We should keep this level of openness. Uh, but we have some core understandings how to deal with identities in a federated way, how to deal with asset description. It can be either a data or asset description with user policies. It can be also other asset description like digital product passes or whatever. I think uh, keep this level of openness and on the other side have some core agreements about te technical decisions and how to deal with these artifacts within this ecosystem. This is more or less a guiding principle behind it um, and uh, it's not on us to judge on it, it's on the community to judge on this. At least this is my general understanding. Um, and now, According to current planning, what will be the connection between GXFS and the Eclipse data space components? Just to let you know, last week we had a workshop and a hackathon in Braunschweig with uh, DLR, where we had both projects as representatives, so GXFS DE as well as EDC. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Laura, but they were already capable to exchange uh, asset description between both catalog frameworks, which is the way to go, right? Probably, Laura, you can also. Yep. Recap what you discussed in Braunschweig. Uh, yeah, sure. Sorry, Larissa, go ahead. Yes, yes, please, Michael, please. So maybe to add on this one, we're currently in discussion with a couple of organizations. We did not touch on the concept of working groups today because the Federation Service will become a project at the Clips Foundation. But there's all this notion of working group, and there are currently a couple of organizations which would like to build such a working group around data spaces. And working groups are projects are complementary. So, um, um, so working groups are there to do cross project alignment. And there is, that's then finally um, dependent on the projects and on the working group, the notion of associated projects to working group. And maybe this could happen, right? So if, there's, if we see that there is a, a close relation between what happens in the data space area and the federation services area, there could be that this federation services could associated to the working group for to understand this is not an exclusive association right so projects could be associated to different working groups for example but at least an, uh, let's say an um, expression of interest of the project and the working group and vice versa and this could be the right place then also to align on how these things yeah okay Russia, you want to add something um, no, it's fine. We can go. Um, and in general, I think, um, yeah, there, there are a lot of other reference implementation like, like Pontos X and, uh, and uh, other frameworks besides some, some key services, which are also directly promoted by the GAIX Association. And what we do in general is we are dealing with scenarios. And there are a multitude of scenarios. There's not just you have to do either this or this. Uh, it depends on the scenario, what is the best approach. If you think you need something with wallet integration, organizational and personal, I think there, uh, JSOS can promote a good core framework, but there are also other SSI implementation out there. And we don't want to overrule them. Uh, but what we are looking forward that we can sketch scenarios and that we can showcase scenarios. I think this is the most convincing part here. Uh, just having a technology stack is not enough to deal with the level of complexity when we are targeting federated data ecosystems. And uh, this is where we can challenge each of the frameworks and where we can also add additional contribution. And hopefully this will bring us into a situation where we can share knowledge and where we can show different reference implementations and each of them can then outline the pros or constraints or whatever. Uh, and this will take some time. Um, 
we had the discussion, can we just directly bring everything under one project umbrella, but EDC is on high speed track because they have a huge pressure to, to uh, support the take up of federal several lighthouse projects and the same for GXFS. We cannot just switch everything and uh, take a breath and have a look at it. I think now it's a time to showcase the scenarios and then I think projects will join naturally uh, if they identify overlap then they should discuss it uh, individually. So this is my understanding here. All right. Uh, what is, uh, I think, a question to Eclipse. Will Eclipse provide us a repository where we will be able to store, produce containers and packages? Will Eclipse provide an environment where we will be able to deploy and integrate? Probably, Michael, can you answer the first one of this question? I will answer the second one. So, yes, we, we, we have all the infrastructure in place. We have what we call the cont continuous build infrastructure. So, then, Flora, you can even elaborate on the detail. I think if I remember, there's a Jenkins uh, install and other things. Yeah, Flora, yeah. just if, if you have the technical details, I have them not. Maybe you can exp uh, elaborate a little bit more on the setup here. We we have say so yes we are so we have a GitLab. The GitLab is hosted in Europe. That's a GitLab with a full feature GitLab. Then we have also um, uh, yes a CI CI CD infrastructure based on Jenkins as you said. We are working on the providing maybe a lighter one with based on the GitLab CI. So maybe the GitLab CI in the coming months. But right now there is a, 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 Jen, a Jenkins available with uh, you have you can have your own master. And we have also release a part a download section a part where you can you can drop your artifact for them to be downloaded and uh, by by, uh, by people outside the, the Eclipse Foundation. So then we have this uh, basically what this is what we are providing. We can deep dive into that in a more technical uh, way maybe if if you want. But uh, that's the first part. Yes, this is we provide all the infrastructure from the source code, the bugs to the release. And the release, they are also overlooked. You can start a release uh, with the Eclipse Foundation, and then this is the beginning. The, the PMC will help you uh, do your release according to the to the governance. We also offer websites, for example, based on Hugo, that you can build your own project. Whereby we have standard generated website, and as I, I showed you some of these websites uh, in my presentation. But these are auto-generated from content which is available. These can be edited as well. But if you would like to say, no, I would like to have a much more beautiful website on the project, that's all the would all be possible and would be hosted by the Eclipse Foundation. Okay. And just to add, um, yeah, right now we have a kind of staging environment where we are also showcasing uh, the deployment of such components based on. It's, it's a Kubernetes cluster based on sovereign cloud state as one of the reference implementations. Again, we are looking forward to make all these components deployable on any Kubernetes environment. And you might know that this is um, also a kind of challenging exercise. Um, although we are talking about a de facto standard, um, there are very lot tiny differences which makes it much easier to work, to work towards this direction. Um, we need to get also better understanding of what is necessary for the understanding of the components, uh, probably also to support Kubernetes uh, um, emulation or, or frameworks on a PC, just to deal with uh, some simple services like OCM or catalog environment. Uh, I think this will be part of our learning curve during the next journey, during this year. Uh, what is really important, if we can help and if it is affordable in terms of cost and resource uh, contribution, we will help as much as we can, but we are not a distribution owner and we are not a managed service provider at this point. So um, please be aware about this. Uh, let's have an exchange on this and try to provide as to collect the level of knowledge to bring everyone in the developer community to a level that they can help themselves. I think this is the best approach here. 
and what kind of your resources or, or infrastructure environments you are going to choose. It, it, it's not on us to make any judgment which is the best breed here. So uh, it, it's on you where you want to deploy it. And probably you don't need all the, the full stack, you just need some of these components. That's why we are featuring at least XFSC as a kind of toolbox. It is not mandated. We try to orchestrate them, we try to synchronize them, we try to align them, but you can just choose just a catalog or just the SSI implementation, or just the contracting tool, or just the workflow engine, whatever you like. So this is at least a conceptual idea behind it. And then, then it's, will the clips provide us repository? Uh, uh, this was our, already the question by Dennis. So I think this was the last question I've seen here. And, uh, Maybe one or two comments on, on, on a, a previous question, Andreas. There was the, the idea of, or someone stated, why would you not summarize everything under one project? I think, please also think about reusability, right? So having, let's say, a, a separation in different projects, which maybe one or one can be reused, that could make sense. But the project would become too big and maybe not necessarily um, over... Uh, e easy to adopt by others, by third parties, um, that may be difficult. So um, I think having a level of complexity which allows the reuse of individual components is important. And the second one, um, and that's also quite important to understand, at the Eclipse Foundation, we do not pick winners. So if we have two projects doing the same, that would be completely fine for us. It's fine, it's the adoption of projects which decides what is preferred by the community, right? Important to understand. Um, because at the end of the day, it's a community building software, which is then in return used by the community. That means the, 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 the project which are most active and which has the most interesting community will be most like the ones which will be adopted most and then in return will have a bigger community. So working on the community of a project is really something which is very, very useful because only with an, act um, um, with an um, active community and a lot of communication, you will find it the place to be for, for a certain technology, for example, being implemented. Thank you, Michael. So um, I think we went through all the question. Maybe we can also add a comment uh, to another question that is, how will the strategic alignment with related projects, example, ADC, happen? Is that also something within the responsibility of Eclipse Foundation? So at the uh, end, it's the responsibility of the community, right? It's not the Eclipse Foundation. We can facilitate, we can help, we can provide maybe meetings or something similar. But at the end, that's something the community needs to do. That's something which is clearly an action of the community. All right, so I don't see any other question. Anyone uh, wants to say something, please raise your hand. <laughs> Maybe a final <laughs> comment. We just touched on our governance. As soon as the project is up and running, the source code is there. We are happy to have a more deep dive session on the on the, on the the what, what committers would need to do and other things. That was, I think, not, not doable today. But as soon as we see that the project is, is, is the source code is available and there's interest in such, a, in such trainings, we are happy to schedule meetings to have these trainings to better understand the obligations and the, the task the committer would need to do. Absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this was just an introduction to uh, get the idea of this transition, but uh, we will do a deep dive on uh, this activity uh, for all the interested parties that would like to be part of it and know about it as well. Yes, Florent. Yes, Don, and just wanted to add also that don't be scared of the governance and the handbook or the development process. They seem sometimes huge. You don't have to read it uh, from top to bottom. Yes, that's uh, except if you have insomnia, but uh, the idea is just you can click on a topic and just get more information about this topic. And once you get to know uh, this uh, this handbook, this development process, it's not so it's not so hard. You know, it's quite easy. Uh, so once you you just need to 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 get to get familiar with it, and then kind kind of you know 
just be, be your project will be drama free with after that you know that uh, it's so you don't have to go through all of it don't be scared and just uh, you know it's quite easy once once you get to know it yes just yeah make sure that uh, we come back to the technical part after yeah That'd be thank you for mentioning this out Florent. yeah sometimes we are scared to read through all these uh mm. requirements and documents but i can say that uh, eclipse has a very supportive and uh, awesome uh team and uh, you are very helpful with uh, all these uh, processes so thank you also for that all right uh, so i think we are to an end now if there are no other questions uh, okay, so I see another question coming. <laughs> uh, will there be a full tutorial how to set up all the software components? Define full tutorial. <laughs> well, uh, within the bit that there are, of course, deployment uh, uh, information. I, I, I know it can be always be enhanced. We are also learning by the workshops um, what are the key questions and try to address them and also capture the answers here. Uh, give us some time to collect all this information um, and uh, share the knowledge with the community. And uh, hopefully uh, this will be also in the future more self-organized with the contributors which are already engaged here. Um, and uh, I think um, after this move to Eclipse, we can capture then all supporting materials, supporting information also within this working area. And as, a, as I said, we will still stay uh, as a support entity, most likely until end of next year to, uh, to, to provide guidance and also provide feedbacks and uh, collect information, as I said, scenarios, architectural patterns, blueprints, how to make use of it, and also enhance further on the stack. Uh, and this is what we can agree already now. Uh, if we are always targeting the expectation by the community, this is a quite challenging question I cannot answer yet. Right. All right. So I don't see any other question coming. I would like to thank you, Florent and uh, Michael, also Andreas, and everyone else for joining today's webinar. If you still have any question, please always get in touch with us. Uh, we have uploaded, as I mentioned previously, uh, the slides uh, under the section material here. Uh, so you feel free to download and uh, go through them again. We hope to see you again at uh, our upcoming webinars. Visit our website gxfs.eu for uh, uh, being updated and also getting in touch with us. On behalf of uh, GXFS team and Eclipse Foundation representatives here, I thank you all again for joining us and hope to see you soon and have a good day, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.